Hello everyone and welcome to another weekly video update. Now those of you who have been following me on my YouTube channel or on LinkedIn know that I make these videos on a weekly basis to bring you latest up-to-date information about the medical industry. And lately we have been talking about COVID-19 related tests because that is top of everyone's mind. So in this video, I'm going to actually cover another exciting development related to COVID-19 tests because FDA just authorized a rapid antigen test. So what's the big deal about the antigen tests, you may ask? Well, these rapid antigen tests, as the name implies, can be deployed at point of care sites and provide results very quickly within a matter of minutes, let's say about 15 minutes or so. The special thing about this particular test is that you don't require any additional instrument to read the test result. It's all self-contained. So this is very exciting development. There are a total of four antigen tests now, and I will provide a comparison of these four tests together in one place. So let's dig right into it and look into the details. So far, FDA has authorized about 226 tests, 182, are RT-PCR tests, 40 are antibody tests, and four of them are antigen tests. This particular test is called the Abbott Binex Now COVID-19 AG card. The technique is lateral flow chromatographic immunoassay, very similar to other antigen tests, but I'll explain to you the difference. And the difference is substantial because you don't require any additional instrument to read the information. Device is a self-contained COVID-19 AG card. So the reader actually is in the device itself. You just read it, looking at the result with your eyes and you read the information right away. Sample is nasal swab. Antigen is nucleocapsid protein N, which is similar to all other antigen tests. Authorized settings are H, M and W and clear certified point of care with waiver. So it's uh, available at a variety of settings, including point of care. And the runtime is about 15 minutes. So let's just take a quick look at how it works and you will see that it's a simple 15 minute procedure. Uh, you basically have open this card, lay it flat on a surface. And at first uh, you drop about six drops of the extraction reagent into a well, which is uh, punched into the card. Then you take the swab, which has been collected from the patient, and you insert in this. And you want to make sure that the top of the swab appears in the top well. And you rotate it three times. And then you essentially cover it together. There's an adhesive layer, you peel that off. You cover it, and then you wait for 15 minutes, and you read the result. If there is only one line, which is the, the control line, the test is negative. If there are two lines, both for the control and the sample, then it's a positive result. So it's very, very quick. You don't require an additional reader to read the information. Now let's look at the antigen test performance of these four tests that have been authorized so far. Uh, the Binex now I just talked about, Lumira DX was authorized uh, also very recently, and Bactin Dickinson's Veritor and Quirel Sophia were authorized uh, a month back or so. So let's look at the limit of detection, which is the minimum amount of virus that can be detected using this test. This TCID50 is a very standard way of measuring the viral concentration. The Binex now shows a value of 22.5 per swab. Now it is very difficult to interpret per swab, so I'm not going to talk more about it. And as I learn more, I will give you more information in future videos. The standard way of measurement is TCID50 per milliliter of a solution. Lumira DX is at 32, BD Veritor 140, and Quadal Sophia is 113. Testing window, this is very important, post onset of symptoms. So these tests are authorized and they work best within a certain time frame after the symptoms appear. Binex now is authorized for seven days. Lumira DX 12, BD and Quadal are five days. So they work best within this time window after the onset of symptoms. Sensitivity is 97% or uh, about 84% for BD Veritor, but it's, it's in the high 19s for most of these uh, tests. And it's essentially positive agreement. So that means 34 
of the true 35 positives were measured as positives with a certain test, in this case, Binax now. So there was one false negative. In this case, there were two false negatives. So this is positive agreement. Specificity is fairly high. For these two tests, it's about 100% and these are about 98, 96%. Now I look at positive predictive value and negative predictive value at a certain disease prevalence. So we are assuming 5%. I've talked about these predictive values in my other videos. So for Binax now in Lumira, the numbers are low. Now it is mainly because their specificity is lower, not very low, but low, and it makes a difference. Negative predictive value at 5% is very high for all four tests, about 100% or so. But the point I wanna make is that these are just starting numbers for reference for a very high level comparison because they are based on a limited number of samples tested during clinical evaluation. The real world performance still remains to be seen. So even though a test might appear very, very good on paper, we still have to see the real rates of false positives and false negatives to have confidence in them. And sure enough, uh, there have been reports of false positives and false negatives. So we really have to be careful about how we interpret the results. And that's why talking with your doctor to understand what it means and what other steps you should take is very important. So I know I went through a lot. I want to make a few comments about the limit of detection for the Abbott's test, which I said it's difficult to interpret and that's true. One good thing to know is that they have provided additional information in their IFU and they have compared their results with a comparator RT-PCR test and as long as the CT value which is cycles to threshold is under 33 their test works very well over 33 it doesn't work very well so what it tells us is that the test is pretty good if the viral load is sufficiently high it may not be suitable for asymptomatic patients or patients who are showing very mild symptoms so talking to your doctor about selecting the right test is very very important anyway the good news is we have four options and one of them actually is very good because it doesn't require any additional instruments so the cost is low Abbott is telling us that they are going their price point will be five dollars so that doesn't mean it'll be the price you pay but they are going to be selling into the commerce market at five dollars a piece and they're going to be making millions of these pieces they already have a contract with the federal government worth $750 million. So I expect this to be scaled up very rapidly. And in future, it is possible that they may get an indication for this test to be used at home or in non-lab settings because it's so easy to perform and the results are available right there, almost like a pregnancy test. So it is excellent news. As you can see, there's a lot going on in our industry right now, especially because of COVID. And the best way to keep in touch is to subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll show you how. You can go to my YouTube channel, Google it, Naveen Agarwal PhD Exceed QM, or you can follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, whenever I post a video on LinkedIn, I always give you a link back to my YouTube channel. I strongly encourage you to subscribe. Let me know what's on your mind, your questions, your thoughts, any other topics you are interested in. I really wanna thank you for your interest and attention. Uh, you have been great. I've heard a lot from all of you and that informs me about the videos I want to make. So thank you again for your support and encouragement. Finally, I hope all of you are staying safe in these difficult times.